Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is part two of Azure Integration Services Pub Sub Messaging for BizTalk developers. And today what we're going to talk about is content-based routing. Let's go. So a little bit about why this episode is important. Uh, naturally, inside of BizTalk, we've got promoted properties that provide many benefits, including the ability to route messages. This allows you to route a message based upon a specific data attribute or element inside of a message. And we also can support fairly granular scenarios. So for example, if we have our employee change scenario that we talked about in last week's video, what if we only wanted one, a cons one of the consumers was only interested when there was an employee add, but not an employee delete. So for example, we have this file that's an extract from our human capital management system and we might have files that will only have add records, so there's an employee being added. And then we might have some scenarios where there's like an employee update or maybe an employee delete. And what happens if we're only interested in files that have employee add as part of the payload? So we can go ahead and route that to the appropriate consumer based upon that value. Now, inside of Logic Apps, we don't have a notion of promoted properties, but with Azure Service Bus, we can take advantage of a feature called user properties. So user properties are a form of custom message metadata, and when published, we can use that data as part of a subscription filter that consumers can subscribe to. So let's go ahead, let's take a deeper look at user properties inside of Azure Service Bus. Okay, so just as a bit of a review, let's take a look at BizTalk promoter properties, and then we'll see similar behavior inside of Azure Service Bus. So on the left-hand side, we've got a schema, and for a specific node, what we can do ahead is go ahead and promote it using quick promotion or, or show promotion. It's not going to get into the nuances of, of those in this video, but the uh, core principle here is that we can go ahead and use it inside of routing. Uh, these promoted properties are persisted in the message box and are actually used as part of tracking. You know, So we, when you get into BAM scenarios, you're going to find that out. Uh, we can programmatically access a promoted property. So inside of an expression shape, we can use message name and then be able to go ahead and find our property schema and our promoted property and access it um, in that manner. Although that is a little bit more expensive, we can use we can go ahead and use distinguish fields to do something similar. Uh, and that, that is a, a lighter weight operation. And then lastly, we've got, we can go ahead and route messages based upon promoted properties. And here what we've got is a send port and we can see that a promoter property will be part of our dropdown where we can go ahead and select that promoter property. And then we can go ahead and have some sort of operation against it. So here, what we're looking at is a promoter property where the value is greater than or equal to a thousand. So this is where it gets really granular in terms of what of our opportunities to use that information. We're gonna see some similar behavior with user properties as well. I wanna call out a couple blogs where I had grabbed these images uh, so thanks folks for making that available and uh, go ahead and check out those blogs if you want more info on promoted properties. So if we think about our demo from our previous video and if you haven't seen that I would encourage you to go ahead and check that out. Now in BizTalk we have the send port subscriptions and then we've got a direct bound port for an orchestration. And so conceptually what we might want to do here is the send port subscriptions would subscribe to all messages of a specific message type. But when it comes to our, our orchestration, that's when we could go ahead and if we had a promoted property that indicated the type of file that we're dealing with, we could go ahead and subscribe to just when that value is set to add. And uh, so that's, that's kind of the scenario what we would do inside of BizTalk through the use of promoter properties and being able to route that information. Now, if we think about Service Bus, it's, it's similar, um, but it's not the same, but it's similar. Uh, and as a result, there's no like for like between like BizTalk and Logic Apps when it comes to promoter properties. But through user properties inside a service bus, we can provide some of this functionality when it comes to content-based routing. And so how do we go ahead and do that? Well, we need to publish this property when we go ahead and put our message on the service bus or when we publish it. And so what we've got here is our service bus send action. And we've got this user properties which is a key value pair. And here what we're doing is, is indicating there's an action and that's a user defined value here. So we're gonna call our action and uh, as our user property and then we're gonna give it a value of add. And in the actual demo, what I'm gonna do is determine this at, at runtime. 
uh, but you can either hard code these or use runtime values through dynamic content when you publish the message. Then what ends up happening is when you create a, uh, a service bus subscription, by default, you're going to have a filter and the filter is going to be all, so all messages. But what you can do is go ahead and delete the default filter, add a new filter, and then we can go ahead and use SQL-like uh, query syntax to go ahead and provide some sort of uh, query uh, against it. So in this case, what we're going to use is action is equal to add. And this specific subscription will only go ahead and retrieve messages when that user property is set to add. And so this is where you can kind of mix and match. You might have some consumers that are interested in all messages. And so they would go ahead and use a default filter. And then you might have some consumers that are interested in only a subset of those messages and can go ahead and use these user properties and create the appropriate filter as a result. And so what this looks like from a demo perspective is we're going to continue to go ahead and publish our messages onto our service bus topic. We're going to have our EAM system go ahead and subscribe to essentially all messages and we're going to create a subscription for that consumer. Similarly, we'll have another subscription for our ERP consumer, and they're also going to go ahead and get all messages through the default filter itself. But when it comes to our investor relations consumer, we're only interested in ads. And so here, this is where we're going to create a subscription and have a SQL filter where action is equal to add. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo and see this in action. Okay, so same as last time, have uh, the same topic multiple subscriptions, so the EAM one, the ERP one, our old investor relations subscription, and then we've got our new one where we're interested in just ads. So if we go ahead and click on this, we're gonna see our filters. And we can go ahead and click on our filter and provide a name when you go ahead and create it. I've just called mine ad. And then here I can go ahead and use a SQL-like expression um, that we can use against our, our message property. So we've got similar capabilities as BizTalk, if we wanted to check for a specific value, do greater than, equal to, things of that nature. So fairly sophisticated here. And uh, if we wanted to go ahead and recreate it, just hit delete and add a new one and you'll be good. But it is important to know that you always do have a filter. Uh, the default is going to be set really to all. And so if we go ahead and look at this one for the ERP, this is using the default filter, it's one equals one, which is always going to be true. And as a result, it's going to pick up a message every single time. So that is our service bus side of things. Let's now go over to our publisher. So same scenario. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look for a new file. We have a, a, vari a variable here that I'm just defining called action type. Uh, this is going to be a type array. And so the reason for this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at an XML message. And I'm making an assumption here that we don't mix operations up. Um, so we're not going to have a file that has an add and a, a remove or delete and an update. It's all going to be the same. It's either all going to be adds or all going to be deletes. And so here I need to go ahead and, and determine that. So I'm just going to have a variable of type array, which is going to help me determine that. We're going to go ahead and get the file content much like before. This is going to be just an XML file from the file system. We're going to go ahead and perform a transformation because we're going to take the uh, HCM, the human capital management file, and convert it to our internal canonical message. And then what we're going to do here is just provide an X path. So I'm just going to go after essentially the first node. Um, we're going to have a, a node called action, and I'm just going to go ahead and get that text value. And I'm going to assign that to our uh, action type of variable here. And so what this does is it returns essentially a, a, a one, an array just with one node, uh, part of it, one element. And so um, hence we're using an array there. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get the first position of that array, that uh, a variable called action type, and we're going to use it as our user properties. So what we'll do is we'll go run this with a couple files. Uh, the first file will have uh, say ads and we'll see that all of our consumers go ahead and get that message and then we'll have another one where we're going to go ahead and delete and we should not see our investor relations logic app run. Uh, the other two should run but not this one. So let's go ahead and try that out. So here let's start with the add file and you can see here we've got an action of add, we've got multiple nodes 
and we're going to now just save as here and we'll say this is 523 and we'll go ahead and close that down. Now if we head over to our investor relations logic app here we can see that it's gone ahead and it's run. So if we open up this specific logic app run instance we should see that we've got a user property here set with uh, a value of action is equal to add. And so rightfully so, this logic app went ahead and run as we would expect. Now if we go ahead and check out our ERP consumer, and we can see that that also just ran, and so life's good from that perspective. So now let's go ahead and try sort of the opposite, where we'll go ahead and provide a file that has a delete action, and then we should see um, that only the ERP and EAM processes run, but our investor relations does not. So here we've got action is delete, action is delete. Let's go ahead and save that. We'll close that down. And here we've got, we're in our ERP logic app still. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And there we see 1012. So it went ahead and processed this. Now let's just double check our user properties, make sure our publisher was setting things up correctly. And here, user properties, we have action is equal to delete. So that works as we would expect. Let's now check out our investor relations and make sure that it didn't run because we wouldn't want it to run here. So here, 1011, let's go ahead and refresh and nothing. So that is working exactly as expected. So it's, uh, you know, I think the moral of the story here is that, uh, yeah, logic apps and BizTalk are different when, it talk, when we talk about content-based routing, but it's one of those things where you can solve it with Azure integration services. So it is important when you start to think about BizTalk migrations that it's not just about logic apps. It's all about uh, AIS, Azure integration services. And in this scenario, we can go ahead and address content-based routing uh, when we take advantage of service bus and user properties. So that concludes uh, today's video. So thanks for checking it out. Um, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. And uh, YouTube, you, obviously you're here. Like, subscribe, comment um, are always welcome. And I think uh, next week what we'll do is we'll take another deeper dive onto Service Bus and start about some, or start talking about some newer, or I guess additional capabilities um, that sit where you may not even have that functionality in BizTalk that we can actually take advantage of Service Bus and actually take advantage of um, something that's not available to us today and add it to our arsenal when it comes to building out integration solutions. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.